This song, the instrumental part for Waymaker, the song Waymaker. Just think about the words. Waymaker, God is a waymaker. No doubt about it. I look at several times in my life in the past when I just didn't think there was a way. Where is the way out? How to get myself into this situation? A lot of times we get ourselves into situations, don't we? We do it ourselves. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> and nobody look at the blame but yourself. But sometimes situations come up that you have no control over. You, you, you're not to blame in that one, but it's still something you got to deal with. And saying it is a way. Is there a way? God is the way. God is the way, the truth, and the life. Speaking of that, into God's design for the family. We talked about this. Christianity is under attack in so many different areas. We've got to learn how to defend our faith. When I was young, it was all about sharing your faith. Christianity was something that was talked about freely. People respected people in the church. And you would not come with much opposition, but respect. That is not the way it is today. It's not the way it's probably going to be until the end times. We talk about Christianity a lot of times and you're now met with uh, dissension or maybe even anger. And there's a lot of different things that take place now. So I'm kind of going from sharing your faith to defending your faith. And some of that stuff we definitely have to defend is God's design for the family. Now we're going to do game show Sunday now. That's my surprise today because you all thought you missed it last week and you didn't. I'll make you do it today. So Maggie's going to get our buzzers. Now, the good thing is I've got this down kind of to a science now. It's not going to, it's not going to take as long as in the past because there's only 11 questions. And they're multiple choice. But they're good questions. And y'all studied, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Der Der Derby's got the pat answer for school. He's never answered like that, right? Huh? Well, let's see. Right, let's see. What now? That one works, kid. So, yeah, we're pretty good. This side and that side. So you need a buzzer person. And um, you need a spokesperson and a buzzer person. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same one, but it can be. So the only person that can answer is whoever your, little, whoever your team captain is. Who's team captain over here? April's team captain over here. Who's over here? Sherry. All right. You got your buzzers? All right. It's multiple choice. It's multiple choice. Please don't, please don't buzz until you hear all four options. Okay? And then after read the four options on the multiple choice, if you have the answer, buzz it. If you don't, then the other team can steal your points. I didn't bring my board out here. Somebody, somebody have to be the, the treasurer and keep track of our, our points too. So I know you all do that. Because you get mad at me when I do it, so <laughs> y'all keep track of the points. What's y'all's team's name over here? This is the what? Munch. What is it? The Munchkins are over here. That's good. That's good. I like that. So if they're the Munchkins, what do you got? The Lollipop Kids. <laughs> the Lollipop Kids? <laughs> It's funny how fast she got that out. <laughs> Don't y'all quit your day jobs. All right. I thought if they were munching, y'all going to be the giants. See where I was going with that? I was trying to help you. Lollipop kids did not come to my mind. All right. Here's the first one. All right. You ready? You know what to do? You, know, you got to tell, you tell your captain, and you got to make sure you got buzzer and the people, all this together. Don't look all right. at me, people. I know you all voted. So, <laughs> y'all are steady. Everything I read, you have heard at least twice at some point. And I divided it up into the nine sections that we studied. So this is section one, God's Design for Family Intro. This is what this is coming from here. Who is the authority in your life if you have a secular worldview? A, God. B, other people. C, self. D, Muhammad. Who is authority in your life if you have a secular worldview? A, God. B, other people. C. Self. D. Muhammad. Yes, April. They tell me C. Self. That is correct. One lollipop for the lollipop kids. Yay! <laughs> I need to have a thing that I do. That's, that's the right answer. That'll be a good one. Okay, that'll be the right answer. All right. So yes, not secular 
secular worldview, just like it sounds. Secular, secular society. Um, soci hey, that's cool. uh, society puts the self in charge. Everybody has an authority in their life. I know most guys say it's their wife. But in reality, it's, it's either God or self. Either way. It's always going to be one or the other. If it's another religion, it's a self-made. All other religions are self-made. Let's just put it that way. So it's self too. So if you have God, if you do not have God as the authority in your life, then you have self. You are in charge of your life. Which one are you? If you're a self person, you're not going to heaven. Remember that. Number two. It's entitled, the section entitled, Where Are You Headed? The reason I'm telling you the heading is because it's going to help you with the answer. Where are you headed is the second part. So, here's the statement. We're all headed somewhere all the time in our life. True, right? We're always headed somewhere. On this journey, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we should live as blank during our time on earth. A, good citizens. B, shadows. C, animatronics. Or D, outsiders. I'll read it one more time. We're all headed somewhere all of the time in our life. On this journey, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we should live as blank during our time on earth. A, good citizens. B, shadows. C, animatronics. Or D, outsiders. Yes, lollipop kids. They have told me D. B, C, D, outsiders. That is correct. It sounds odd for the Bible to say that we should live as outsiders, but that's true. We're not home yet. We're living in a place that has sin and has a lot of things going on. And um, Peter says it's okay to feel different. I tell my kids that all the time when they were growing up in school. They're like, well, nobody else goes to church in my class or nobody else does this. or Everybody smokes the wacky weed except for me. And I'm like, let's see call it that. I don't even know. I don't know what the names are these days. But anyway, um, I was like, that's okay. You're going to feel like an outsider a lot of times. But that's what the Bible said. You must be doing something right. Good job, lollipops. All right. Third section is called Education, Opposition, and Answers. It's going to be a little more difficult. Where is one of the greatest passages in the Bible... That comprises, that com yeah, yes. Where, where is one of the greatest passages of the Bible that comprises the whole chapter about how God will watch over your life, your coming and your going, now and forevermore? Here's your choices. A, Psalm 121. B, Proverbs 12. C, Genesis 1. D, Exodus 45. Where is one of the greatest passages in the Bible that comprises the whole chapter and how God will watch over your life, your coming and your going, now and forevermore. A, Psalm 121. B, Proverbs 12. C, Genesis 1. D, Exodus 45. Cricket. That's a good cricket. It is cricket. Oh, yeah. I, heard a, I heard a something over here. What you got, Shay? Hey, Psalm 121. Very good. Munchkins are, are rallying. Yes. So God says, I know where you've been. I know where you are. I know where you're going. Very important when sometimes in life you feel like you're lost. You kind of forgot where you're headed. Sometimes you wake up, sometimes you go, now what am I doing all this for? <laughs> why, why do I go to work every day? Why do we have all these kids? What am I doing? You, almost everybody has that feeling one time in their life. Just remember, God knows where you've been, where you are, where you're going. When you feel lost, check the God GPS. Number four, section titled Peace in the Family. Where did Jesus give his famous speech that included calling peacemakers children of God? That is recorded for us in Matthew 5. Where did he say that? A, a valley. B, a mountainside. C, a garden. Or D, on the Hallmark Channel. Here are, the, here are the questions again. Where did Jesus give his famous speech that included calling peacemakers children of God that is recorded for us in Matthew 5? A, valley. B, mountainside. 
C, Garden, or D, on the Hallmark Channel? Hey, yes, sir. Okay, oh, here you go, Maggie. Give them a different one. Give, give them a choice there. Or just ring them all. The first time you went through the answers, they hit the button, but you can't hear it. All right. Okay, Munchkins, what do you think? Do you think mountain? Are you asking me or are you telling me? No, that's what we say. That is the right answer. That's the bad one. Okay. Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, that's right. The mountainside. That's uh that's Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 1 through 11. Talking about peace in the family. One of the places that has the greatest turmoil a lot of times is in your own family. One of the hardest places to keep peace is in your own family. Why? Because everybody knows the dirt on everybody else. All right? They always say, uh, you know, prophet's not welcome in his own homeland. That's true. It's hard. You have to work at it. You have to work at having peace in your own family. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus says. Number five, the church under attack. What is the greatest threat to the survival of the Christian population in America? A, abortion. B, non-Christian immigrants. C, the low fertility rate. Or D, all the above. What, a great, what is the greatest threat to the survival of the Christian population in America? A, abortion. B, non-Christian immigrants. C, low fertility rate. Or D, all the above. D. Correct, D, all the above. All the above threaten the population, the Christian population in America. Abortion it goes without saying. That's, that's reducing the fertility rate. Non-Christian immigrants, people moving into America that don't believe what we believe, and then assimilating into our society. People say, "Well, the Bible says that people that aren't, uh, you know, in our country are sinners and all this, and we shouldn't let them in and all that because the Bible says don't do this, don't do this." The Bible said that in the beginning because they were just starting out, and just think what would have happened. If our forefathers would have started assimilating with every other religion in the world many, many, many years ago, we wouldn't have Christianity today. Now, it doesn't mean we're supposed to not like or try to help people that aren't like us. Actually, it's just the opposite. We use our strength in numbers in the Christian faith to help other people. People do not understand the Bible, and they speak out of turn when they say things like that the Old Testament preaches that we're not supposed to love other people. That is incorrect. It says... You should try to keep your faith strong within one another. If you have a Muslim friend, great. Talk to them about Jesus. Love them. Invite them to dinner. Because they're lost. The greatest threat is all the above. Correct. So that was the lollipops, right? That was three to two, right? Somebody else give me scores. Y'all get mad at me when I mess it up. <laughs> right, okay. Number six. We had a Sunday called Adoption Sunday. The great movie coming out, made by the same people that made Overcomer. It's in theaters now. Go see it. It's fantastic. And uh, we'll also we'll probably get the rights to play it next year out here at Family Fun Night. It's called uh, uh, Life Mark, I think is the name of it. Um, but anyway, we did a, we did Adoption Sunday. What is the first recorded adoption in the Bible? A. Esther. I have to read them all. Esther adopted by Mordecai because you don't know what. We don't know what the choices are. The first recorded adoption in the Bible. Esther adopted by Mordecai. Moses adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. God being a father to the fatherless in Deuteronomy. Or Noah adopting a baby goat in Genesis. <laughs> yes. B. B is Moses is correct. Moses adopted uh, by Pharaoh's daughter. That's in Exodus 2.5. Very good. The next uh, section we uh, talked about Sunday, one, one Sunday is abortion and Satan is a sore loser. I like that title. What book in the Bible contains the phrase, thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb and will help you? What book in the Bible contains the phrase, thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb and will help you? A, Psalms, B, Job, C, Exodus, D, Isaiah. Oh, Connie says Isaiah, so. Very good. D. Wow. D, Isaiah. That was hard. 
Oh. There are several things that are uh, society social issues that are always in the news and always in political divide and all this kind of stuff. And they will want to tell you that the Bible doesn't, that Jesus never said anything about abortion and all this kind of stuff. That is just total, that's total baloney. The Bible is very clear and very straightforward on abortion. It is a sin. It is a forgivable sin. If you know someone's had an abortion, we need to minister to them, counsel them. It is, it is a very devastating thing when people realize the severity of their sin when they've had an abortion. It is a very hard thing to go through. And we need to help those people. We need to help new beginnings. And that's one thing we need to talk about um, probably maybe a week after next. We haven't met our goal to help new beginnings this year, so we want to up that up. And it's mainly because we didn't have as many family fun nights where we get change out of our car and put the big baby bottle. But we do we do want to help them. Um, so that's one way we can always say. People always say, well, y'all, all you Christians are always against stuff that you never want to help. Well, that might be true sometimes. But let, let's, let's turn that around. Say, so you know what? We do help. We do help. Yes, we are against that. That's true. It's wrong. We're killing a person. But we're going to put our money where our mouth is. We're going to go help these young mothers that are in situations. We're going to help them. We're going to help them raise their child. Everything we can do, financial, spiritual, just sometimes just taking them out to dinner. That's what we do. That's what we should do. Number eight. Did I mark that down? Uh, we had a unit called Freedom, Division, and Hope. And this is when Dennis spoke, I think. Paul says in Galatians that, quote, the whole law is fulfilled by obeying this one command. Paul says in Galatians that this whole law is fulfilled by obeying this one command. What is that one command? A, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. B, have no other gods before me. C, love your neighbor as yourself. Or D, stop all that cussing. A, go therefore make disciples of all nations. Have no, yes. Who is it over? Oh, we got, we got, it's close. Okay, close. You ought to get it. Okay, over here, they're, they're formulating. C, love your neighbor as yourself. That's correct. Galatians 5, 14. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right. That's what it all encompasses right there, right? People say, well, what, what was the whole point of Jesus? Why did he come? He said, look, people. Love your neighbor as yourself. Take care of one another. Love each other. Something a lot of people forget these days. We can agree to disagree and still love one another. Oh, let's see. I got one for the kids. Kids can only answer this. <clears throat> what does ABC stand for? And not already been chewed. I've heard that joke before. <laughs> what I was taught as a kid is incorrect. That's the kind of gum I always used to get. ABC gum. What does ABC stand for? Yes. That's very close. You got two out of three. Very close. She said, it starts with A. First words, it is believe and can profess. That's true. I think I think I may allow it on terminology alone. Because you said accept, right? Accept and admit is pretty close. Accept Christ, yeah. admit that he's the king, pretty close. So, yeah. Go to the judges. judges. Judges say yes. <laughs> so, good, good job. So, you got your, you got your munchkin another point there. Good job. All right. All right, kids. Since you got your thinking caps on, kids, this will, this will, be, when, this will be for you, too. You ready? How many books are in the Bible? Gonna count. <laughs> yes, over there. I should put it. It's close. Sixty-six. You got it over here. That's close. That's good. It's close. Just always, we always remember is, and you, maybe this helps y'all remember, maybe not. But Route sixty-six. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the uh, longest, most preserved roads in America. And I'm always thinking like the Bible's like a road map. So the Bible is your own Route 66. So that's how I remember. 66 books in the Bible, Route 66. That's close, though. Good, 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 good. That's good. Now let's do another kid in there. Y'all, let's see what happens. 
See, once it gets your attention, you're going to keep it going. Where can the following verse be found in the Bible? God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son. There you go, John 3, 16. I knew, I knew he was going to buzz over a quick on that one. That's good. All right, let's see. What is it? It is five. It is five to six. And we have one question left. I did not plan this. Because I'm scared of all of you when it comes to these things. We may have a tiebreaker down here. We'll see what it, if, if, in fact, we need it, we have a tiebreaker question. Down here. The last uh, category that we talked about on Sunday was the fruit of spirit in the family. The family unit is, one, is the most single powerful unit that God has created for us to be living a blessed life. The Bible says in Genesis, God created male and female, created them, told us to populate. So the family is very, very important. And then he says that there are things that we should be displaying. My kids were always horrified when I said, I know you're not reading your Bible. But like, why? Because y'all are fighting and carrying on. You're not, you're not describing or living any of the fruits of the Spirit. Also, I know you're not reading your Bible because it's under our bed. Those two reasons. <laughs> And the first one sounded really fancy, but the second was, I know you're not reading your Bible because I have it. Here, here's your Bible. Go read it. So, which of the following is not a fruit of the Spirit? A, faith. B, kindness. C, joy. D, love. Which is not a fruit of the Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians. Faith, kindness, joy, or love. That's hard. I gave you the verse if you need it. 1 Corinthians 12, 9. That's good, that's good, that's really good. All right, so maybe you're equally yoked here, you, you know, you scored very close, very even. You scored much better than on the first game show Sunday we had. Remember the very first one? I was scared. Y'all were very competitive, it got crazy, that's why I had to come up with the rules of no spitting and cussing. And uh, well, John was also here for that. John was here for that. <laughs> April, got, April got a little heated. He, was, he, got, he had the two competitive uh, souls in the church, that's true. It's, it was... It was good. So here, here's my last question. We'll, we'll, let the, we'll let the kids answer this one too. Uh, last question. Besides the Bible, obviously, where can you find more resources about everything we talk about at church? Besides the Bible, where can you find those things? Yes. The internet. Where? Well, that's scary. Don't just go to the internet. Library, you find lots of weird books in the library. Dress me, I throw many of them away. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, you have a resource list. Right? There it is. We have a. We have a. Uh, this is. That's very important. <laughs> is to be able to go somewhere after we talk about things, instead of just trying to. Um, you can take the battery out the back if it's messed up, or I will just come get it from you. Um, no, it's important. Now listen, it's important that you retain the stuff that you that you learn from God. It's important you retain it. Of course, you can always go to the Bible. But the Bible is hard for me. It's hard for everybody just to jump in there and try to understand it. So what I do is I vet all this stuff for you so you'll have these easy places to go to. There's a QR code inside. You can take a picture of it with your phone. It takes you straight to the church resource page. It's at the bottom. It's a link at the bottom of every text I send you. You just click on that. It takes you to the church resource page. Basically, every time we talk about something in church, there's going to be some kind of resource that you can go to next to know more information. And, and I encourage you not to just go to the Internet and do a Google search because there's a lot of wrong information on the Internet. It looks, at first, it looks right, and it, it's, you know, but a lot of it is wrong, even though it looks right. So be very careful about just doing a search, especially kids, just doing a search on something. 
make sure you're going to the right places. And so I won't mention all these places, but basically on the church resource page, you'll find places you can go to find lots of answers. So a lot of things we talk about, a lot of things maybe your, your friends have questions about, you know, about being a Christian and that kind of stuff. There's resources on there. There's also, and it's part B here, there's resources in here. On the old Oregon in here, there's, uh, if I mention a book, it's in there. There's books for kids in there. There's videos in there you can have. Um, you know, if you want to take them and bring them back, there's great uh, DVDs in there. There's a lot of books to help kids uh, discover what it means to be a Christian in there. There's the five books are in there that, that we go through um, before we baptize at a church as a, as a youngster. So there's lots of resources in there as well as on the church resource page. So please use those. I spent a lot of time putting those together for you. And, and it's important to be able to, uh, to have the right answers. Because y'all know one of my one of my pet peeves is people that are in some kind of argument or something and, and use scripture incorrectly to try to back up their point. Uh, I really, really dislike that, and um, it, it makes us look ignorant. So uh, make sure you know what you're talking about when you get in these conversations with other people. If you don't know, you know what you're supposed to say. I don't know. <laughs> you say I don't know. If somebody asks you a question about something in your faith and you don't know, just say I don't know. I'll get back with you. There's no harm in saying I don't know. That's being honest, and that's what we want to do. Y'all did good. I'm proud of you. You did good. You learned some stuff. Very impressive.